Beijing issues highest heat alert amidst unusually hot summer, accidentally revealing China's dark side. Sohu's posters were completely blocked. U.S. sent its ship through the Taiwan Strait right after Blinken visited China. 12th-century Bodhisattva statue auctioned in Paris for 2.2 million dollars. The Chinese capital Beijing on June 23rd issued the highest heat warning as the city endures another tormenting day of scorching weather. As Reuters reported, temperatures exceeded 40 degrees Celsius (104 degrees Fahrenheit), spread to Beijing's southern suburbs around 1:30 p.m. on June 23rd, which climbed to 40.3 degrees Celsius (104.54 degrees Fahrenheit) at 4 p.m. This prompted the local authorities to issue a red alert about the heat wave, which is declared when the temperature is expected to go higher than 40 degrees Celsius in a day or less. Just the previous day, the city reported a temperature peak at 41.1 degrees Celsius (106 degrees Fahrenheit) at around 3:19 p.m., and it is believed to have been the hottest level ever recorded in June. Tanghu Kao, a small town in the northeastern part of Beijing, marked a high of 41.8 degrees Celsius, tipping the temperatures recorded across China. The China Meteorological Administration forecasts that most parts of China's north will have to undergo this challenging weather for at least eight days to come. The scorching heat has ravaged the country since May. It has become dangerous enough that animals were dying in droves, including farmed fish in Guangxi and hundreds of pigs in Jiangsu Province. Recently, the mainland media outlet Sohu News produced a series of posters on domestic social issues based on official authoritative data. The report was initially intended to cool the current domestic manic populist public opinion atmosphere, but it accidentally exposed a large number of social problems in China. At present, these posters are entirely banned. According to the report, the current average monthly disposable income. Of 700 million people is less than 2,614 yuan. The current unemployment rate of young people exceeded 20 percent for the first time. The birth rate showed negative growth for the first time in 61 years. At least 150 million only children are under pressure to look after their elderly parents. The juvenile crime rate increased by 42.8 percent. The risk of depression in the unemployed group is 31 percent. About 50 million elderly people aged 60 to 69 are still doing heavy work. China has about 85 million disabled people. More than 20 million people suffer from rare diseases. After the related articles were published, Sohu's posters went viral. Some people said the posters reminded them of the grand narrative created by the Chinese Communist Party or CCP that is contrary to the cruel reality. In this regard, Wu Dianzhong. Associate Professor at the Center for General Education at Taipei University of Marine Technology pointed out there was an interesting phenomenon in mainland China. Many people lived a miserable and unsatisfactory life, but the CCP had been using its media to paralyze and appease people. People relied on that to comfort themselves. It's called the "draw a cake to satisfy hunger" trick. He also gave an example of someone who didn't study well. And failed the university entrance exam. He was comforted by the thought that his school was the province's model school. A person living in a 20 square meter apartment feels proud to think he is living in the capital. A man dare not say a word when meeting a thief on the street, but every day they can post on military forums saying, "Whoever offends China will be punished, no matter how far away." The most ironic thing is that the grand narrative can make a person lay flat. And feel very proud when he hears that the GDP driven by the CCP has taken off. A person who can't even pay a monthly mortgage, despite living in a 90 square meter house, is content with China's vast land and resources. A man is jealous when he sees his neighbor living better than him, but he says he loves his hometown, and tears of joy fill his eyes. These examples show the world that through propaganda. The CCP can make the Chinese people numb, forget about concrete pain and loss, and continue to get excited about abstract things. Wu Dianzhongngo also said that he had taken a taxi in China and found that the drivers spoke very well. 
They can talk about the past and the present from domestic to international situations, as if the United Nations were run by themselves. In comparison, as he said, is this not unreasonable, as Xi Jinping holds a map of the world, drawing red lines all over the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait, and wants to liberate the miserable people all over the world, because when the Chinese can't decide what's going on around them, only the grand narrative remains. The Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense, or MND, announced on June 22nd that a U.S. Coast Guard ship passed through the Taiwan Strait on June 20th. According to Taiwan News, the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet confirmed the news, saying the ship is USCGC Stratton. It is worth noting that the USCGC Stratton made the trip through the Taiwan Strait shortly after U.S. Secretary of State Blinken finished his visit to China. The 7th Fleet said that Stratton's actions demonstrate the United States' commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. The 7th Fleet also echoes the long-standing U.S. assertion that American aircraft and ships will fly, sail, and operate anywhere international law allows. The U.S. and other allies, including France, Britain, and Canada, have regularly sailed their ships through the Taiwan Strait in recent years. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, considers such actions provocative. Earlier this month, the U.S. Navy released a video showing a CCP military vessel cutting off a U.S. destroyer in the Taiwan Strait. The Chinese Foreign Ministry official Yang Tao on June 19th implied that the U.S. said it adhered to the One China policy, but took actions to support Taiwan against Beijing with the Taiwan Relations Act, or the Six Assurances. Since the CCP won dominion over China, the U.S. has always been one of the leading countries to condemn the CCP's abuse of human rights and freedoms. The strained relationship between Washington and Beijing is believed to be mainly caused by the CCP's failure to give up its hostility to fundamental human rights. Recently, a family in Paris consigned an heirloom for auction at Bonhams. After evaluation, it was found that the Buddha statue is a scarce one that originated in 12th century China. It is one of a group of lost Buddha statues and is valued at up to $2.2 million. The wooden statue of Bodhisattva is mottled and cracked outside and is more than a meter tall sitting upright, and the eyes looking down are extremely dignified. The statue was bought by a family living in the suburbs of Paris in 1932 and has been passed down by older generations to this day. Before the valuation, the family were unaware of the statue's value. China's rare wood sculptures have attracted the international art world's attention. Collectors and art connoisseurs gathered at Bonham Paris Auction House to admire them on June 13th. Today what we see is only part the remains of something that was much more impressive, but you still see the detailing, and it is very, very rare for a figure of this size to survive. And what makes it so special is that it's more or less complete. It has the head, the torso, and the head is one piece. And you can still get a sense of the magnificence. Bonham's head of Chinese art, Caroline Shelton, says the sculpture was once part of an elaborate 38-piece collection, originally made for important Buddhist temples in northern China. For us and for the collectors and for Chinese people, even if they're not collectors of wood figures, this is a very important figure because it's compassionate. And you can see when you look at the face, it's a benevolent face, it's a kind face, and it's called the, the Bodhisattva of Compassion because he looks down and he listens to the world, to people's suffering. And you can, you can really sense it, you get an idea of it. So it's quite remarkable that it has survived and is still here after all these years.